Hello, Michael. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, very good. Great to see you, Michael. How are things going? Very well, thank you. Thanks for having me today. I appreciate it. No, brilliant. I'm looking forward to having a chat with you on this as well. So let, let, let's sort of get to it because obviously um, the first question I'd like to ask you, because I see it everywhere, especially with, with what you're doing with um, with City Zenith, you know, what are urban digital twins? Because obviously Forbes predicts by 2025, 500 of the world's top cities will be relying on them for daily operations. So what is it what is it made out of and what is the definition well that's a great way to start i mean urban digital twins for those of you who are not familiar i mean digital twins generally are virtual replicas of physical things in the case of urban digital twins uh physical things in cities connected to all of the data in and around them and they're used in in, in cities specifically to optimize all aspects of planning uh, building and ultimately ongoing operations and maintenance of building and infrastructure assets in cities at a high level. That's what urban digital twins are. Because mm. we saw earlier, I don't know if you saw some of the the um, speakers earlier. We had from Shell and um, some of the other operators that they were talking about how significant it was to uh, how te how technology actually will play a big part in monitoring energy transition. So. Almost every company, I think major energy company, is investigating already the use of digital twins to facilitate energy transition. Um, why is this the preferred method? Um, why do you think it's so good? Um, obviously, managing the complexity of the energy transition process in the built environment. So what's sort of your take on how that sort of lands together? Yes, it's really interesting. We were first approached by one of the largest energy companies in the world from Europe uh, a few years ago uh, with the thesis that they wanted to, to build a, a custom version uh, of our core digital twin platform technology for themselves to help facilitate energy transition. And we didn't quite understand what they really meant until, until later. So the, uh, the, the model is as follows. And energy transition involves a, a number of complex simultaneous processes from multiple consultants to planning, to monitoring, to construction, et cetera. And optimizing all of these, uh, this type of complexity, especially in the built environment, is best managed by tools that are good for that. There really aren't uh, tools that are what we call point tools or specific uh, either in the oil and gas or built environment sector that do this. Digital twins actually are the first category of technology that can actually aggregate all this information at that scale and then run analytics at that scale to really make that happen at, at a city level. So um, an example would be you know, one of our favorite companies, NG, out of, uh, out of uh, France and Brussels. They had done a really interesting project for Ohio State University where they were using a digital twin to really effectively bundle their entire energy transition offering underneath this energy twin. So they could go to the client and they can show the client with their data, this is what you have and model, this is what's going to happen as we do these different things over the period of this transitioning process, which will include everything from solar implementations to other renewables, to green building retrofits, to very days away. <laughs> We just, we, just leaked it. we just leaked it. Um, okay. We're close. Oh, okay. To, we're is close that, is that to good or bad? people. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. I'm close to the people there. Um, fabulous city with great ambitions. I was going to say these are all very progressive cities. They're all they're all looking to do something. So, what exactly is happening with these projects in these cities? You know, who is the principal contractee? Um, who are the major participants in the project um, projects as well? Man, all great questions. These projects are now all underway, as as you as you heard. We're 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 launched in 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 uh, New York City at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. We're also now getting underway in Phoenix, with where Amazon is a major partner there, and the and the uh, Downtown Phoenix partnership uh, in uh, Las Vegas. Which, by the way, we're having a webinar just two and a half hours from now of our own, featuring the Chief Information Officer of Las Vegas, talking about that city's interest in digital twins, just in about a couple couple hours. Um, and uh, you know, it's it's fascinating. You know, I think what's happening the the digital twins are in, in, in each of these projects. City, we're taking what we call a a uh, kind of charter district approach. That is, we're choosing an area of the city within these progressive cities, a progressive area where there is a mandate either to 
uh, eliminate emissions in a certain part of the city for various reasons. It could be a university campus. It could be a district. It could be in the case of uh, New York Navy Yard. And, you know, the process of decarbonizing buildings and buildings are, you know, 50 to 70 percent of the emissions problems in cities. In places like New York, there's 75, 80, 85 percent of the problems. Crazy. And while we all focus on the look forward on 2030, uh, by the time we get to 2030, 92 percent of the buildings that will be standing already exist. So the, the challenge to solving the climate change problem and the challenge to really making energy retrofit work is in the built environment. So it's a couple of pieces in that. It's a built environment and, of course, the source itself. It's con converting the sources increasingly to renewals, but also connecting that to the demand from the you know the behavior of these buildings by doing four different things, really. The first being to... Uh, study and explore and implement the energy management systems that can help them reduce consumption by 15 to 18 percent on average. And then analyzing that building or campus for renewable options, whatever they are, uh, solar glass, uh, solar panels, geothermal, et cetera, to see how to optimize that mix of renewables. And finally, there are now applications. Remember, tenants, people, us, are responsible for 20, 30 percent of all consumption, our behavior, leaving windows open, turning lights on not having smart metering, all the type of stuff, just human behavior. So we call this tenant slash resident management pieces. What the digital twin will do is optimize all of these for each individual building. And buildings are all different. You have warehouses, mm. data centers, totally different energy profile, multifamily, but they're all consuming power. Data centers themselves are a whole category. And data centers themselves are 4% of global consumption. That's how big the category is. So, uh, you know, digital twins are uniquely... I think they're really the only tool you power to do this. And in each case, we work with different specialists from that area, different partners that are either mm -hmm. the energy modeler or the renewable assessment modeler or the tenant uh, behavior change management modeler so that we can take local tools and adapt this region by region. And we find that different regions may be using different energy modeling tools. You know, our, our strategy is not to go into the city of New York. We work with the and we partner with the green building authorities in these cities. So we actually are working with the entity that has domain over all the buildings that are going green. That's our focus. So that's how we may narrow it down to, and our pilot projects include two or three buildings that are both um, leveraging the twin as well as financial products that are being developed now that actually pay for all this up front. It's amazing stuff. You can even use the twin to model the financial products, fascinating things. You'll see this happening in all of these cities that we're doing around the world right now. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's interesting what you said there about the data centers because I had um, I had a short conversation uh, with um, with Google actually uh, probably about seven seven weeks ago about the the emissions that they're trying to reduce, and they worked with us actually on another event, um, and they were looking at using AI to leverage the emissions or reduce them from their data centers, which is very, it's a great area you're in, absolutely brilliant area you're in as well. With with your end and solution, I mean, that sounds, it does sound very fascinating. It sounds very good, I have to admit. Um, providing building owners advanced um, digital twin technology to optimize the physical green building retrofits. Um, obviously, wh why is this a solution better than any other savings as a service financing solutions available today because obviously you've got other things that you can do but how, how, sure. how why is that better you tell me why it's better well i think there are a couple of things you're taking on with this challenge one is the consulting piece was the in the analysis of so the green building retrofit needs to sell the design of the retrofit and there's the financing piece and both today are basically a cottage industry uh the the, the, yeah. the green building retrofit piece is largely a subservice provided by architects engineers mechanical folks, green building consultants and others. And it varies widely. It's, 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 like a, it's like a tapestry of different approaches that use myriads of different tools to solve their problem. On the financing side, it's the same thing. It's an ocean of financing optionality that actually confuses the owner. So I, what, what, these, uh, what the digital twin can do is actually help you narrow down and automate that very manual, labor-intensive and risky green building metrofic consulting process into plugins, tools, and then being able to continuously uh, optimize and refine that process. And then at the same time, the financial products, uh, being able to automate that. So right now, these energy savings as a service scheme is mostly paid back in 10 years. Uh, we're now confident that we can pay these back within two years with no money down to the building owner. So the building owner gets the twin, the analysis, oh, the package, wow. and doesn't pay, doesn't pay a penny. It's all a clever 
product which leverages the future value of, uh, of, of carbon offsets. It's a carbon offset arbitrage model that is just brilliant. You see right now all in the world, all the world's millions of acres being bought up by conglomerates. It's because the forests need to be preserved in order to basically what we're doing here is using the world's preserving the world's forest to offset the, 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 the decarbonization activity of our buildings in major cities. So it's a brilliant model where everybody mm. wins. The building owner wins money. They eternally eternal green buildings, which are cheaper to run. The city wins from having the lowest uh, or the cleanest energy profiles. And then we win because countries like Africa and Indonesia and places that have large tracts of forests are actually going to be turned made wealthier and kind of brought back into the circular economy because of what they have as an asset, which is forest. So it's very fascinating what's happening in the economy right now. And Digital Twins, I don't know if you heard the Brazil ambassador lately at COP26, this is exactly what he talked about, using Digital Twins to help make these connections between the urban and the forest, Fast, down to tracking trees everywhere. It's amazing. It's, it's win-win for everyone, isn't it, if it's done properly? Sure. You can see that as well. Where does sure. this go from here then? So obviously you've given me a very good understanding of where you're going. It's fantastic what you're doing. Um, it's sure. pretty groundbreaking, but I understand you're about to announce a major financing that will take you to, I think, was it about 100 cities altogether? So in, in your model, the city, let's say the local green building authority, local universities, I would assume, and others are all free users. Um, That's right. you make the, you, let's say you make the initial investment in implementing the digital training platform, mm -hmm. let's say in each city, um, and monetize the offering subsequently. So are you trying to create a global standard? We are. We're trying to create a, a, a global platform that allows all of the standards to work together. Okay. Because there are many of them. And we, we think by focusing uniquely on this particular problem, which is the built environment and infrastructure, really, um, that that should be the baseline for all of this. We also think the city as a site is the right target because they have domain over most energy consumption. Uh, you know, 75%, I believe, all emissions come from cities. So, yes, we're going to be able to go to 100 cities now with this terrific start we've had, et cetera. And it's... It's a free platform for everyone's use and, and you know, the building owners ultimately who derive the most value end up paying a very small amount of money for this over time. Um, and that's why I think it's it's kind of catching catching fire the way it is. It is. I see. I see it is everywhere. I think everywhere I've looked, I've seen something positive about it as well. So um, final question I would ask you, Michael, um, the project recently caught the attention of the World Economic Forum. Um, who right. actually appointed you, I think, as a, did they appoint you as a global innovator in their Carbon Net City Zero program? Um, just tell us very quickly, how is that going? Great. Now, they pulled us in. Uh, we're one of 100 companies in the world that's been given this honor to work in their Net Zero Carbon Cities program. Uh, we just, we've that's had several cool. meetings with them now. Um, and uh, they're getting involved now in potentially being a part of Clean Cities, Clean Future. So that's something we're chatting about. And they will be part of one of our webinars coming up. So we'll, we'll let everybody know. Please tune in. I think that's the, that's fantastic to know. C can I ask you, just just as a sort of final point, what, how do you see this technology sort of developing? Because obviously we've talked about how it's been very public over the last few years. But do you see many game-changing things happen to Digital Twins over the next two or three years as well? Yes, I think that once there's a core platform that takes root, whether candidly out there, I'm very magnanimous, ours or somebody else's, I think people will, will jump on board en masse. Um, you know, the kind yeah. of incoming we have as a small company today, we can't handle. So the interest, yeah. I think that the, the, the lack of understanding, we understand um, but what they're really missing, I think, is the maturity now of vision that has now sort of taken root in the idea of being able to develop a platform concept that someone can actually manipulate, create, and, and work on their own as opposed to delivering services. That seems to be what the market is shaking out as. So once that platform really settles in and everyone can use it really easily, a bunch of free users, then it's going to be, it's all going to soar. Yeah, that's what that's what I think as well. It's been brilliant speaking with you. I wish we had a bit longer, to be honest, Mike, because I'd like to ask you a bit more about some of these initiatives. Hopefully next time you can talk about the work you're going to do with Rotterdam as well. And, and you can sort of get a bit give give a bit more of an update on that. But it, it's been absolutely wonderful to have you. It's been an honor having you 
on the actual event as well. City Zenith um, is actually a gold sponsor also for the event. So uh, please feel free to also see their stand on the exhi uh, exhibition booth. I can't even say it probably. Um, but Michael, lovely speaking with you. And I really hope to speak to you again very soon. Thank you, Adam. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate it. Thank you.